Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord who crowns us with love and mercy. For as far as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is the Lord's steadfast love toward those who fear him. For he knows how we are made. That our days are like grass, they flourish like the grain of the field, but the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And, it, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. Bless the Lord, O my soul. In life, in death, and in what lies beyond death, God calls us to relate to him in faith, to rest in the assurance of God's love and to encounter whatever crises life presents in the awareness of God's presence in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we have come here this day to reaffirm the values, the beliefs, and the attitudes that make possible such confident living. We have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the lives of Hazel and Robin. We come together in a time of grieving to acknowledge the loss death brings to our human existence. But we also come to ask God to grant grace Grant us grace, that in pain you may find comfort, that in sorrow you may know hope, and that in death you may experience resurrection. For in dying Christ destroyed our death, rising Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism Hazel and Robin put on Christ, so in Christ may they be clothed in glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. We, we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when he appears we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. And we hear the words as of our Lord Christ Jesus as he said, Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray. Mysterious, nurturing, and intent of God, creator and giver of life, source of love and joy, we come into your presence to celebrate life, especially the lives of Hazel and Robin, even as we come in your presence to grieve their loss to our own lives. As we gather in the shadow of death, O God, may we see the light and peace of your presence as revealed to us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We're going to have a time of remembering as Scott will share some thoughts with us now. Greetings, everyone. As the kind minister mentioned, we were originally brought together to celebrate the life of Hazel Bennett, who passed away Tuesday, February 17th, at the age of 93. Since that time, however, we suddenly experienced a second loss of Robin Bennett on Monday of this week. It seemed only appropriate, therefore, to uh, commemorate both today. Given the time constraints since Dad's passing, uh, my notes are not as clear as they might otherwise have been for this event, so forgive me if I'm uh, jumping around or um, in my thoughts of the family members involved. Uh, both this eulogy and the slideshow material um, had to be expanded in short order to include Dad. I'm focusing on my own perspective of these people here. Everyone here will have their own memories and relationships to Hazel and Robin Bennett. Uh, I can only talk about what I know. Somewhat fortunately for me, there are similarities in character among the members of the Bennett family. So I might sometimes speak of both deceased in a common context. I certainly don't do this out of disrespect, but rather an acknowledgement of the family values that existed. Both Dad and myself were uh, only children, which means our immediate section of the wider Bennett family was very small. And it's partly for this reason that the relationship between myself, Dad, Grandma, and Grandpa was extremely close. Hazel was the perfect Christian and the best example of religion I will witness in my lifetime. She did not preach. She simply lived according to honest and righteous principles, whereby you have no choice but understand pure kindness while interacting with her. She was able to communicate these principles by deed alone, 
and it was impossible for her offspring to avoid doing the same. Robin was also very spiritual, but not in a strictly organized sense. He was heavily influenced by his parents' values, but he also constructed his own understanding of the world and the value of common decency and respect toward others. It seemed as though Dad's sense of satisfaction stemmed from helping people to realize their own strengths and potential and helping wherever possible to enhance those strengths. <coughs> when Grandpa died in 1997, Dad owned and operated a hot air balloon business north of Toronto. Dad enjoyed nothing better than to give his customers a safe but exciting experience they would remember for the rest of their lives. With Grandpa gone, however, he was not able to continue the business knowing that Grandma had the weight of responsibility to maintain the family home by herself. With that, he moved home and assisted with, uh, with all manner of support up to and including Grandma's passing. He knew he was putting his life on hold for this purpose, but he felt the need to repay all of Grandma's kindness during his upbringing. He made many sacrifices between then and now to ensure Mom's comfort. Grandma was aware of the consequences of Dad's choices and did communicate to me on occasion that she wished Dad was able to have a separate life and not be tied to the house for her sake. Grandma passed on to me her need to document life thoroughly and vigorously. She kept a diary continuously from at least 1965 until very recent times. Her writings are mostly factual in nature and, and, color, and cover uh, many of the dailings goings on as well as the uh, weather and temperature. She was in fact documenting her entire life. She often referred to them to remind herself of past events and important dates. And there was also a sense of posterity to her descendants um, who can also read what was happening at that particular time. So they've become very uh, valuable for that fact alone. Uh, diary writing was uh, not a secretive act uh, for her. We were always able to reference them just as, uh, just as she would. Hazel also painted pictures in oil, took thousands of photographs, and created enough audio cassettes to keep me busy for months. Um, I've inherited some of these obsessions. Grandma and Dad both loved music. Grandma in particular absolutely loved to dance and sing. At any gathering that involved these two things, she was in heaven. All the Bennets have a wicked but very gentle sense of humor. Um, there were always jokes and stories around the card table. In particular, Dad and Grandpa loved to play practical jokes on others and friends. These jokes were never at the expense of the people involved, but always executed in a manner that everyone could have a good laugh afterward. Dad and Grandpa were both natural uh, inventors, and together they built various printing, electroplating, and sign-making devices. In particular, the last six or seven years, Dad rekindled his love for hot rods and classic automobiles. With a small group of like-minded friends, Dad has been busy reliving his youth through uh, hot rods. For the last two years, I've been uh, racing one of his cars, um, and every time I came back from a run, he would often be close to tears on being able to once again enjoy the sport of his youth. The Bennets are all about family and friends. Never did a Bennett turn someone away or failed to assist in times of need. The same goes for love of all living things. Whether an injured or abandoned cat or raccoon, the animal would be cared for until it was well. The family cats were always on the top of the food chain in the Bennett house. Grandma would go so far as to feed weak bumblebees until they could fly again. <clears throat> Ross, Hazel, and Robin were good people, and I will miss them deeply. I wish them the best of success in their new existence. Any qualities we admire in the way that they live their life will now live on through us in the world. I wish to thank everybody in the room and those who could not be here today for their kind support and family during this time. I would like to thank, in particular, Penny, Wayne and Donna, Archie, Larry, and Nicole for everything they did for Dad and Grandma over the years and decades. Uh, I'd also like to uh, thank my mom and Alice for the support and assistance during this very difficult week. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. You're more vocal today than you were the other day when you met with me. I learned a lot more today. <laughs> As we now come to hear God's word for this time, let us bow in prayer. 
Creator God, giver of life, you know and care for all people, whoever we are and whatever our thoughts of you. Speak your word to us and come among us with love to give life to all today and forever. Amen. Robin had called me about Hazel's impending dying, and we'd set this day up in advance to celebrate her life. Little did we know that, as you said on Monday, he would be found dead himself. This has, in all the years of my ministry, has presented me with a unique situation to celebrate the life of two people who've died under different circumstances. And I wondered how best to approach it and, and to honor both, and yet in remembering that they're also not only similar in many ways, but unique in many ways to their own, own personalities. So after meeting with Scott and Marjorie the other day, it came to me to share with you a passage that I often use from Ecclesiastes 3, where the writer says, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and to enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before him. That which is already has been. That which is to be already is. And God seeks out that what has gone by. You've been handed the 23rd Psalm. I ask that you join with me now in the reading of that psalm together. I have an extra one here too. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And in the 14th chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. But Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Here ends these readings of God's word, and may God give to us his blessing and his understanding. And all glory and praise be unto our God. Amen. It has been quite a few years now since I first heard The Dash, a poem written by Linda Ellis, who is an author, a speaker, and a poet. It was read at a funeral service I was officiating at by a granddaughter in celebration of her grandfather's life. And 
And I've used it a number of times over the years because it seems quite appropriate for us as we gather together for times such as we are doing here today. And the poem goes like this. I read of a reverend who stood to speak at the funeral of his friend. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of her birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time that she spent alive on earth and now only those who loved her know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash, what matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change for you never know how much time is left that could still be rearranged? And if we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel, be less quick to anger and show appreciation more, and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read and with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? Now I believe this poem beautifully captures what our life means between the date of our earthly birth and the date of our earthly death. The writer of the book of Ecclesiastes tells us that in the seasons of life there is a time to be born and there is a time to die. And in between the writer tells us that there are other seasons of life, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. It is that dash, those seasons of Hazel's life that you have come to celebrate here together as family and friends celebrating her dash <coughs> in what was a long and full life. But you've also come to celebrate Robin's life, that in the untimeliness of his death, we recognize the truth of the poet when she wrote that there is a time to remember that this special dash might only last a little while. So we celebrate today in the memories that belong to all of you as family and as friends, remembering Hazel as a person of faith, as Scott has already mentioned, as an active member of North Trenton United Church, remembering her service of others, one of the things that was given to me as an example was delivering meals to others through the Meals and Wheels program. Remembering her love of gardening and flowers. And for the second time within a little over a year, I was told of a person who grew the biggest tomatoes. These are but a few things that go along with the memories that Scott has shared. It was shared with me that Hazel was a happy woman with a good sense of humor and a strong love of family. In Scott's and Marjorie's words, she was a lovely woman right up to the end. And you remember Robin's life today, remembering a person who also had a sense of humor, which seems to run through the course of this family. Scott saying that his dad was crazy funny. We've heard of his love of cars. And while he struggled with, a health, with health issues for a number of years, it was with a strong sense of duty and a love of family that he returned to Trenton to look after his mother after his father died. In promising that there is a place prepared for us, Jesus assures us that the stories, the memories are but a part of lives not only remembered and loved, but lives that live on in the promise of the eternal life with God. This assurance from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, comes to us in seven words, seven simple yet seven profound words. Because I live, you also will live. This is the promise of Easter, a promise that isn't for this one special day in the coming springtime of the year, but is a promise for all the seasons of our lives. For it is the promise of the resurrection, 
that even in death we shall know life, for we shall live on in what Cahil Gibran calls in the prophet the silent memory of God. And so remember Hazel and Robin as loved and valued family, family members and as friends, celebrating their lives as a gift from our Creator God celebrating all about them that lives on in each one of you. A promise that is made through, again, through the promise of eternal life, a promise that Scott mentioned at near the end of his talk. For these are the things that continue to make you who and what you are in the living of your own lives. Because of the power of Easter in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we believe that death is not an end but is a beginning to a new life with God. And this leads us to believe that now in the season of their death, we are able to commend the souls, the lives of Hazel Rena Bennett and Robin Dale Bennett into God's eternal keeping, where they have now been received into the fullness of life and the promise of heaven, where they may now find the comfort of the love, the hope, the joy, and the peace of the eternal life with God. Amen. Let us pray. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, still you are God. And so we pray to you for one another in this time of need. We pray for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strengthen them. To those who have sinned, grant your mercy. To all who sorrow, bless with your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. For in all our ways we trust you, O God, and to you with your church on earth and in heaven we offer honor and glory, now and forever. O God, all that you have given us is yours. As first, as first you gave Hazel and Robin to this life, so now we give their lives back to you praying that you would receive Hazel and Robin into the arms of your mercy. Raise them up with all your people. And we pray, O oh God, that you would look kindly upon Scott, upon Nicole, upon Marjorie, upon all others that they hold dear within the family circle and as friends. Gather their sorrow into your peace and heal their memories and be present in their grieving, and overcome any doubt. And God, receive us all, and raise us into a new life. Help us to love and serve you in this world, that we may enter into your joy in the world to come. This we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who when on earth taught us how to pray when he, we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we complete the service here in this room, I would invite on behalf of the family and I would invite all of you to stay for a time of lunch and refreshment and visiting across the hall. And uh, we are all invited to stay and share in that. As we come to the conclusion of the service, I would invite you all to stand with me for the commendation and the benediction, please, as you are able. You only are immortal, the creator of all. We are mortal, formed of the earth, and to the earth shall we return. This you ordained when you created us, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with all your saints, where there is neither pain, nor sorrow, nor sighing. 
Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend these children of your creation, your servants, Hazel and Robin. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, sheep of your fold, lambs of your flock, and sinners of your redeeming. Receive them into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of our, his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and all your days. Amen.